here's how almost all philosophical and moral systems are built up. At the bottom, you have the most general ideas, the abstract ones, good, evil, God and the devil. And slowly you build up how many commandments should there be, how should you pray and so on. And in the end, if you're lucky, you've got a complete system about how you should live. But here's the problem. If David Hume is right and all our ideas come in through the senses, our brains aren't big enough to deal with those huge abstract ideas. And if we haven't got the abstract ideas at the bottom of the philosophical system, well... It collapses and with it fall many notions we'd had about ethics and morality. But of course Hume doesn't leave it like that. He does try to build up again, but this time using his own observations about the human brain. What he calls the science of man. That way, he hopes, he will be able to build a system which may be a little more modest than the grand structures of old, but is nonetheless more soundly based. Next question, though. Where do these observations that count so much for Hume come from? Let's not strain ourselves by going too far. Let's start with Hume's favourite haunt, the tavern, the pub, the perfect place to watch people relax and in company. And by watching, always by watching, Hume comes to the conclusion that the basis of all knowledge is causation, something we automatically take for granted, cause and effect, that one thing logically follows another. For example, fire. Hume knows that by standing in front of it, he'd warm himself, He'd experienced that in the past. He knew, therefore, that flame equals heat. It's rooted in his experience. It's not guesswork, it's kind of alert familiarity. You can't see a cause, not with a microscope or a telescope. You can't smell a cause. A cause has no colour. But your senses lead you to the obvious need for cause, some causes. But what about the first cause? What about God and religion and the saints and the pearly gates and the miracles? After all, who has ever had a direct sense-based experience of that? This deep scepticism did not go down enormously well, of course, with the church which, in the Scotland of the day, as we've seen, made it moderately dangerous. The church got its authority from traditional scripture and, of course, the power of miracles. Challenging that, the church thought, might produce a kind of universal acid seeping through society and pulling down the very pillars of faith. <laughs> 